All right, so again, flexion, extension, and hyperextension. Again, extension means more like going in the opposite direction of flexion. And hyperextension is when you will go past that anatomical position. So now we're looking at just the neck. Again, this is why if you don't know what joint you're talking about in a question, it'll be very hard to answer it. So I, at least when I write questions, I always try to make sure that it's pretty explicit which joint I'm talking about. So now we're talking about this joint right here. So we're talking about this neck joint, or just like the vertebrae that are located in this general area. Okay, so notice that inflection, she's craning her head forward. So she started off in this position and she's decreasing the angle. First it was at 180, now it's less than 180 by moving her head forward. But again, my general rule of thumb still applies. She's moving her head toward the anterior and this is one of those general cases where moving toward the anterior is flexion. Now hyperextension, she's hyperextending her, she's craning her head back. That increases the angle from that 180 past 180 and now she's hyperextended. Now what we have here, so this guy's doing, I assume is doing a backflip or, or if he's not doing a gainer. But what is he doing with his neck? Again, we're looking at his neck, his neck joint right here. So we're drawing an anatomical position, imaginary line. So if he was in anatomical position, his head and neck would be kind of aligned with his upper back. And if we draw that line, well, notice that he's tucking his head slightly forward. So his neck is in a flexed position. Now, what is she doing here? She's also doing a back flip, but notice her head position. So again, what I do when I'm looking at a joint and determining whether there's flexion or hyperextension or extension at the joint, well, actually it's very hard to, to determine extension from just a static image because like, you don't know whether which direction they're moving. But is she in a flex position or is she in a hyperextended position? Well, let's draw that imaginary line. So we have our upper back and where would her head be if she was in an anatomical position? Her head would be aligned with her upper back. Now, where is her head in reality? Well, now that look at her head and her neck. It's actually creamed back, like this woman in her hyperextended position. And that's what happens. She increased the angle between her upper back and her head. So this is like flexion and extension of the neck. Again, it follows that anterior posterior general rule. Now, or I shouldn't say rule, I should say rule of thumb, like a heuristic. Okay, so now let's talk about, we talked about the neck. Now let's look at the waist and lower back. And then what we have here, well, same picture. And what's he doing? Well, again, if his legs were aligned with his back, his back would be up here, his legs would be down here. But what happened to the angle? So his upper torso went from here and went down to here. So it went from 180 and now it's even less than 90 degrees. It's this very small angle. So he is in a flexed position at his waist. Again, it's very important to pinpoint where that joint you're talking about is. And to help you visualize this, look at this. Again, if he was in an anatomical position, his upper back and his legs would be aligned in that same plane. But where is he in this picture? He bent forward, so that's why his lower back or in waist are in a flexed position because you decrease that angle. And again, this is still following that rule of thumb. Movement toward the anterior is generally flexion. Now, same backflip example, except being, instead of being tucked, she's doing a full layout. So what she's doing is, again, we're looking at the lower back instead of her neck in this example. So I'm drawing that imaginary line to help you with a similar way to kind of like visualize this. So if her upper back was, or if her back was aligned with her legs, her torso was aligned with her legs, she would look like this. But she's really hyperextended. Look, she's almost got like 90 degrees bending backwards. So yeah, she's definitely hyperextended backwards. And again, this is going toward the posterior. The anterior is generally flexion. That posterior is generally, generally hyperextension. Role still is in fact. All right, so now, and this is why in this picture from Martini, it's kind of confusing at first because you have all these red dots everywhere. Again, if you're seeing a picture of a movement, you have to, and you're trying to test on it, you have to say which movement you're looking at specifically. Now we're looking at the elbow in this picture, so we're not ignoring everything else. Just zoom in on the 
the joint I'm talking about when I'm testing you on this. Okay, so then, if the upper arm and her lower arm, forearm were, were in anatomical position, they would be in a straight line. But where is her arm now? Well, notice that her arm is in flex position, because why? It went from that 180, and now it's almost at 90 degrees, so they decreased the angle. But if this arm was straight down here, what would happen? Well, she'd still be flexing toward the anterior. So what is she doing? She's flexing her muscles, contracting it, but is it flexion? Yes, it is flexion, but not because she's contracting and flexing her muscles. It's because she's decreasing the angle between her, these two um, in, at the joint. So again, if it was a fully straightened out in anatomical position, her forearm will be in line with her upper arm, but she's decreasing the angle. So again, do not con sometimes flexing a muscle does cause flexion, but they're not one and the same. And what do we have here? So if this was in like anatomical position, remember that the forearm and the upper arm would be in a line, so draw that imaginary line. But notice that this person is hyperextending. So again, they're going way past 180, and they're fully locking out their arms, and I can't do this, but I know like there's always, and I notice this tends to be the, for some reason, I have to look up if the women are more, they, they're able to hyperextend their elbows more, but always like in every lecture, when I had this in person, there would be some, yeah, one of the female students, like they would able to hyperextend their elbow really, they would do this, and they're hyper, they're, they would really hyperextend their elbow. Like, but I mean, is it pathological? Maybe they're just flexible, I don't know, but I should look that up to see if like women can do that more on often. Or that actually sounds like a good pack back topic. <laughs> All right, so then, I, this isn't in Martini, but yeah, so it's like, that would be kind of cool, yeah. Someone posted a, a picture of their hyperextend extending their elbow. But again, some people just can naturally do that. Okay, so flexion and extension of the shoulder. I th Martini doesn't have this, that's why I'm including this. So flexion and extension of the shoulder. So if we're talking about just in terms of anterior and posterior fle flexion and extension, again, this is where I think the angle part is a little harder. When I think about this angle, I mean, I think it's like, okay, I think about more about the anterior posterior rule, rule of thumb. Are you moving your shoulder toward the anterior? Are you moving your shoulder, your shoulder and arm toward the posterior? So again, this is an anatomical position. You can draw, sometimes they draw it with like the head and the arm in alignment. And that's what causes that decrease in angle, even though it's not like your head isn't directly connected to your arm. But that's the way, or but I just, this is where I kind of use my anterior posterior rule a lot more. And what's this guy doing? Well, notice that compared to this guy who's doing the front dumbbell raise and flex, doing flexion toward the anterior, this guy is moving his arms backwards towards the posterior. Again, if he was in anatomical position, his arms would be to the side. So what's he doing? He's going past anatomical position and hyperextending toward the posterior. So I think when you're talking about movement of the arm, or movement of the, or it's like, movement of the arm at the shoulder joint, I think the anterior posterior rule is a little easier to interpret rather than doing the decrease the angle rule. But I mean, maybe you get the decrease the angle rule, I don't know. Whichever sticks in your mind, I approve.